Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from Simply Code and today we are going to discuss how to take users input using the select box in JavaScript. So before we begin, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. In the last few videos, we discussed the same thing, right? We saw how we could take input using text boxes and then we saw how we can take input using radio buttons. Today we are going to grab user's input with the help of a select box in JavaScript. So without wasting any time, let's move on to the programming part directly. First, we'll see how to create a select box in HTML and then we'll move on to the JavaScript part. So let's move on to HTML and we'll create a select box here. If you guys remember, we used the input tag in the previous few videos for text boxes and radio buttons. But for the select box, the scenario is a bit different. We have to use the select element in HTML. So we'll write here select. So we have the select element here. We have to use this for select box in JavaScript or in HTML. So this select box is used to create a drop down list of some elements. So we can add as many elements as we want to that list. So we'll use the option tag for each component we are going to use. So the code goes like this. We'll start with the select tag and let's save this and see if it makes any changes to a browser. So you can see it on the browser that we have a button over here. Now we'll add options to this drop down list. For that we'll use the option tag, we'll write here option and let's say we have three options. We have three car manufacturers name. So let's say the first name is BMW. Then we'll copy this statement and we'll paste it again and again and then we'll change the name of manufacturers. So let's say another manufacturer is Audi and the last one is Ford. Fine. We have three manufacturers now. Save it and you can see it over here. We have a drop down list of three different elements. We have BMW, Audi and Ford here. Next up, we'll add a button. So a submit button as we did in the previous few videos. For that, we will write here input type is equals to button. And then we have value is equals to submit. Fine. Save it. And we'll use a BR tag here. Save it now and here you can see we have a drop down list here. We have a select box here and then we have a submit button over here. Fine. Now we want to print the option we selected by clicking this submit button. For that we have to add functionality to our HTML document, right? So we'll follow the same steps as we did in the last video wherein we used the radio buttons and the text boxes. So we'll write here inside this input tag, we'll write here on click so what we want to do is we want to call a function on clicking a submit button right so we'll write here a function name so let's say the function name is selected and we have to use the id attribute in the select element right so we'll use the id attribute here we are not going to use our id attribute inside the option tags but we are going to use the id attribute inside the select tag so we'll write here id is equals to let's say one fine so we have a id here now we have to use the value property here as well so i hope you guys remember the value property which we discussed in previous videos so the value property is used to access these values right so we'll write here value is equals to bmw and then for audi the value will be Audi and then for Ford the value will be Ford. Fine. Save it and here we are done with the HTML document. So next up we'll create a function in the JavaScript file. So let's move on to the JavaScript file and we'll create a function over here. So we'll write here function and the function name is selected. Then we have the body of this function right. So we are going to repeat the same steps. We are going to take a variable x which will hold the reference of select statement. So we'll write here document dot get element by id and then we'll write here the id. So the id is 1. So now we have a variable x which holds the reference value of select element right. 
Now we have used the document dot get element by ID method to get the reference of the selected value. Next up, we'll use some properties for select element while printing the value with alert method. So if you guys remember in the previous video wherein we used the dot checked property for radio buttons. So similarly, we have some more properties here for the select boxes as well. So let's have a look at them. So we'll write here alert and then we have a property which will go like this. We'll write here x dot options and then we have this brackets and dot value. So this options property here is a collection of all the options we have in our select tag. We have multiple options, right? This property works on arrays. So we have an array of all the elements and we can access any of them. For that, we will write here the index value, right? So let's say the index value is zero. We want to print the element present at number one. So we'll save it. And the moment we press submit button, you can see here we have the output as BMW. Now, one thing to notice here is it doesn't matter which option the user chooses, the output will remain BMW for all those cases because we are using the first element of the array. So no matter which option the user is selecting, the message will be there with the value present at index zero. So we can say now that we can't use static values, right? We can't use zero, one or two here because we want to provide the value dynamically because we have three different values here and we want to print the value which the user selected, not the one present at index zero, one or two. So for that, we have another property here. We have to write here x dot selected index and one thing you have to remember is we have to write here x dot selected index or any variable we are using here so we are good to go now save it and if we press submit now while clicking on bmw so our first option is bmw let's press the submit button and here you can see we have the output as bmw and next up, we'll be selecting Audi and we'll press submit. So here you can see we have the output as Audi now. And finally, we have Ford as well. So let's check it as well. So press the submit button and here you can see we have the output as Ford. So this is how we can take inputs in JavaScript from drop down lists. Next up, we'll go through a simple program as we did in the last video, wherein we'll create a quiz question and we'll check if the option selected by the user is correct or not. So this is the code for that. So we have the question here as JavaScript was developed by, we are using another question different from the one we used in the last video. So we know who developed JavaScript, right? So we have a question here, JavaScript was developed by, and then we have two options for the same question. The first one is Brendan Eich and the second one is Guido Van Rossum. So then we have the ID as one for the select element and the values are also the same. Then we have a button over here, which will call function one on clicking. And if we move to a JavaScript file, we can see here we have a function fun one and then we have a variable X, which holds the reference of value returned by document dot get element by ID method. And then we use this value. So we have used their X dot options. So what we are doing is we are basically checking that if the selected value is equals to Brendan Ike or not. If the value is equal to Brendan Ike, then the output will be the answer is correct. Else the output will be the answer is wrong. So let's save it and we'll move back to our HTML file and we'll save this file as well. So now here you can see we have a question over here and we have a select box which has two options Brendan Ike and Guido Win Rossum, right? So let's select Brendan Ike first, press the submit button and here you can see it says the answer is correct. Fine. Next up, we are going to use Guido Van Rossum and we are going to press submit button. So here you can see the answer is wrong. So that's all for this video guys. I hope you guys got it. See you in the next one where we will go through the get element by tag name method in JavaScript. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, do let us know in the comments, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe SimplyCode. Thank you.